thank you very much for sticking with us. I appreciate it. Uh, let's move a little bit, um, I don't say off Final Cut 10, but a little bit of a larger scope. We talked about Final Cut thank 10 you. and then we talked about Apple. So let's talk about kind of the future of the industry, okay? Um, uh, and I forgot where I was going with that. So the future of the industry, right now, Final Cut 10 doesn't allow for baseband I.O. And that's obviously in a bit, been a big rub for most people. Uh, Only if you define what baseband I.O. <laughs> is. Excuse me. If any of you have decks or cameras with little color-coded RCA jacks, you can't get that into Final Cut currently. There is no way of getting video I.O. into uh, Final Cut that way or... Well, you can get firewire. Yeah. You can get firewire, but so I'm talking more. So baseband I/O must be something different, then, isn't it? Let's go even bigger. In the in the <laughs> professional <laughs> broadcast industry, the standard uh, for safety is HD cam, HD cam SR. Currently, there is no way of getting video to HD cam or HD cam SR. Um, so obviously, Apple is sending us a message: either it doesn't exist, or B, we're going to let third parties do it. So let's take a look at the first portion of that. Um, is this the nail in the coffin as far as tape? And does the tragedy overseas have anything to do with that? Oh, oh, I got an answer. I got I'm an answer. I'm not surprised. Larry. I got an answer. I'm really not surprised. Let's hear it. I was, uh, normally I do a podcast called Digital Production Buzz, and it airs at exactly the same time that this uh, event is going. I'm listening to it right now. I, 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 you're channeling. <laughs> so excellent. I had, because Michael is so important, I could not pass up the opportunity to be here, so we pre-taped the entire show. So worldwide, they're listening to a taped version. Tape? Tape. It's their old terms like film. If he can say film, <laughs> I can say tape. I'm an old live director that worked to tape. They, anyway, I, dis I was talking to a gentleman named Will Pisniewski, and Will is the vice president of production, post-production for a company called Authentic Entertainment, mm -hmm. and they specialize in reality programs. No disrespect intended. <laughs> And um, so I was talking to Will, and I said, how do you deliver your shows? He said, I wish that the networks would allow us to do file-based transfer. I'd like to take it and dub the show to LTO tape, because we can get LTO tape from any vendor in the United States. Why don't we explain what having, LTO tape is? So we're um, not there. Sorry. Uh, in the old days. <laughs> Speak we would up, record right. pictures. We would record pictures to videotape. Now, some of you may have heard of this kind of archaic <laughs> communication technology, but videotape locked you into a specific format. You could record a DV picture on DV tape, but you couldn't record digibeta picture on a DV tape. You're locked into a format. LTO tape is like videotape. It's magnetic. It's got oxide. It's glued to a piece of plastic. It's in a box, and you put it into a device, but it records digital signals. So you can record any file. You put a Word file on it, Excel file, HD cam, DV, DVC Pro HD, a cookbook, whatever you want. It goes on the, that LTO tape. It can be played back on any LTO player. It's the uh, you guys uh, sell cache devices, and it's a way of backing up servers. Uh, there's a lot of different LTO drives. There's LTO four and LTO five, and LTO five is a good one. You should buy one for me for Christmas. Anyway, the, the point is, is that we can put anything on an LTO tape. What he wanted to do is he wanted to get away from HD cam SR tape because one, the plant that makes it, plant in Japan that makes it has been damaged by the tsunami. They can't make enough tapes. People can't get their hands on them. They can't deliver the network shows to the network. And they, what they would like to do is to bypass tape completely and just do file-based transfers up to the network because the quality of the file is exactly the same as the quality that's on HD cam tape. You just don't have to encode it again. So from his point of view, and he's responsible for God knows how many hundred million reality programs a day, he thinks file-based transfer is kind of cool. I think file-based transfer is kind of cool too. As long as we in the file transfer, we can keep the quality, and as long as we're sending uncompressed files, we can we can do that. But that would be that would be defined by the needs of the client. And it's always defined by the needs. Yeah, the right? guy and, with the checkbook calls the shot. The, they're not ready to. to that, so. And, well, and why, why is that? Is it because of yeah. the cost of doing an infrastructure change at a, uh, at a studio, or is it just we don't want to change because we have a workflow in place that just works? I, I, think, it's, I think it's both of those, actually. Um, I don't know any studio that wouldn't change if they could save money. If it was based <laughs> yeah. on the cost of infrastructure change, their calculations would be inaccurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it can, it can be based on inaccurate reasons, so I suppose that gives credence to the argument. But it's, uh, I tell people that I, it sounds like, it's a generalization, but I tend to break down people when I meet them into three categories. Now, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm, I'm frightened. Uh, I really am. Right. Break down three categories. And, but I really am. And the three, but I really am. And the three categories are 33% of who you are is your past experiential knowledge. That's what makes up about a third of you is your past experiential knowledge. 
33% of who you are is your current understanding of new software and hardware technologies and what the world looks like today, not associated with the past, the new stuff. And then the last third, which is the hardest third, the hardest nut to crack, is what do you believe? What are your philosophies? Because your past and your present change your mind and your philosophical approach to anything. And it's much easier um, to, to adjust anything other than the philosophical approach. And it's a philosophy that tends to come in a top-down manner that can change everything. When the top of a company or business or a studio or whatever is of an old philosophy or an antiquated philosophy or of the wrong philosophy, everything follows suit, which obviously is logical. A good friend of mine is a producer and director, Dean Devlin. And uh, Dean is a very, very successful filmmaker, very successful filmmaker. Um, and uh, he has one of the most successful cable shows on the air called uh, Leverage. And Dean was a massive, massive proponent, proponent of not Final Cut initially, it was internalization. Mm -hmm. The idea of teach a man to fish, that's his philosophy. <laughs> Final Cut just happened to be the tool that empowered him to achieve what he wanted to achieve. It was the, the, the method and the tool that allowed him to do it better, faster, cheaper, and with my control, at my finger, okay? Dean, through the efforts of his team, and the investments he's made, and the technology has changed the philosophies of Turner. And in Atlanta, when you see leverage, you are not seeing a tape. You are seeing the output from a Final Cut Pro timeline that is fiber jetted or asparagus to Atlanta. And that is what goes on the air. That now, from one television show, is moving from show to show, season to season, now network to network. And I can happily say that I recently got a deliverables list for a uh, Disney picture I'm um, working on. And the Disney picture on the deliverables list does not have a tape. It's all LTO. Right? And it's a ProRes is one of the uh, masters oh, required for it. And there is no SR. And that, to me, uh, brought not only a smile to my face, but showed me that the, and I know a lot of people at the, at the tip tops of Disney uh, in some of their technology divisions that philosophically, I'm like, well, this deliverables list reflects what they think, how they feel, how they live, what tools they have at home, what car they buy. All that works together to decide what we think. And if we think of something, we then do it. And the people under us, under us typically do the same and the same. Mm -hmm. So it works down. So if you're in a position of power, if you're in a decision-making role, you are charged, we are charged with the notion of being extremely educated, to take our past experiential knowledge, our present experiential knowledge, and our philosophies, and make sure that we make the right decisions because we can affect a lot more people than, than just ourselves. Cool, well, we're done now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that that ties in very nicely with what Larry said also about um, the, the element of pain uh, and how that kind of motivates people. I think that, uh, Probably Dean Devlin was a bigger pain in the ass to people at the network than their tech deliverable people. Mm -hmm. And so at a certain point, that won out. Um, uh, I do know that the latest deliverables list that I saw at DreamWorks is everything's on LTO now. They no longer ask for any film deliverables. Uh, and, and that I know came because uh, it just got really hard to do three strip colored separations and it got prohibitively expensive so that pain outweighed the LTO. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point um, major corporations will make the decision based on champions inside and pain level. Thank you Norman. We're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to ask the audience uh, if they'd like to grill our uh, illustrious members up here and also take your Twitter questions. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. The HP EliteBook mobile workstation is great for me because I'm always traveling. It gives me the opportunity when I come up with an idea to get it on the computer quickly. It is a full workstation in a very small package. I would say it's the fastest computer I've ever owned. 